180 million pounds spent in the transfer window and we ain't finished yet. I don't know that for a fact, but, but I think it's so. I've actually, what it's done is given me faith now. When I see us linked with other players, I think we might just do it. I mean, why would we stop at 180 million? I just find that a, a weird, not as a weird figure, but I just think if we were going to be cutting our cloth, if we were going to be, uh, you know, tightening the purse strings, we, we probably would have done 80, 90 million. I might, I might go to 180. You might as well spend 200 million. Hey, it's not my money. Well, sort of, it's our money. But yeah, you get, you get what I'm talking about. Uh, so there's, we've been linked to a few players in and also a few players out, which I want to discuss here in just a second. But I think that, I think the hope and the the buzz it's given me about this transfer window has sort of meant that I'm viewing these names linked and thinking, Do you know what, maybe just maybe uh, these players might come in and we've really gone for it and the club's really gone for it. It doesn't matter how you do, whether it's the ownership or the manager or whatever, they're having a go. And I just think, Do you know what, if they're having a go now and they still think that maybe one or two positions are not quite right. I would imagine they're probably going to go for it and try and get some deals done. There's always been money there. That much is clear. I mentioned the other day that they were only willing to go to a certain level with Lingard and they were going to pull out. Now, I thought that was because we didn't have enough money, but that wasn't it. They had enough money. They just they put a value on Lingard and they just said to him, look, Jesse, we're only going to go this far. I mean, a penny for his thoughts now. I don't wonder what he thinks looking in. I'm sure he's absolutely fine. Look, you know, Nottingham Forest has spent loads of money and he's probably absolutely fine with his decision. But uh, it just goes to show that we, we were ambitious. That was, we don't know really what he said, but the, the noises coming out of, of that camp were very much West Ham lack ambition. And so, you know, we've chosen the, the projects at Nottingham Forest. I just don't think that was the case. I mean, clearly we have been ambitious all window. Uh, so looking at this ambition, uh, let's start by talking about Harrison Ashby. You'd have seen the title, Harrison Ashby, uh, wan Saka in the title of this video. OK, so uh, Harrison Ashby, I don't want to say he's running his contract down. We don't know that that's the case. I don't think this is about money at all. Now, there's very few youngsters who get dedicated videos on this channel and I've done two on Ashby over the last couple of years I rate him highly I think he's a really good player I think he has the potential to be to be a certainly a Premier League right back and you know that's that's not an easy thing there's a lot of good right backs in the Premier League right uh, I think Moyes rates him highly but Moyes is caught I think probably in a bit of a tricky situation. As I said, they're serious. a serious intent for West Ham. Uh, Moyes wants to push on. Moyes wants to really challenge this season. And probably it's going to be difficult for him to blood a youngster this season. Bearing in mind he's going around spending 50 million here, 35 million there, 35. You know what I mean? He's spending all this money all over the place. And understandably, Ashby wants first team football. I think he's good enough first team football as well. I don't think starting every week yet, but I did a video earlier on in the in the transfer window where I said I think this guy should really be representing us 15 to 20 times this season. Not all starts, but you know, whatever eight starts and whatever 12 appearances off the bench just to really start blooding him in. I always talk about messaging on here. I thought it was important that Moyes sends the messaging, even if it's he doesn't think he's ready quite yet, to let him know that we're getting him ready. Now as I understand it, there's interest from Newcastle. I've also heard, I don't know how much I can say, um, I've also heard there's that uh, Thomas Tuchel rates him highly as well. Uh, now, Ashby himself has followed a couple of players on Instagram, the Newcastle players, and they followed him back. So I think his most recent two followers were, were Kieran Trippier and, and somebody else, can't remember exactly. Um, so that adds a little bit more more fuel to the fire, doesn't it, in terms of the rumour. Eddie Howe apparently is interested and West Ham, um, I, West Ham apparently are, are a little bit reluctant to have another Sonny Perkins situation here. So we may be not forced to sell, but maybe uh, a case of, of jumping before we're pushed on that one. I think it'd be a real shame to see him go. I don't want him to go at all. I really, really want him to stay. Uh, but it, it has opened up the door for another transfer to come in. And that's Aaron wan -Bissaka. Now, when I say it's opened up the door, I just wonder if the links with wan -Bissaka, and I do think we're genuinely interested. And this is what I mean. I believe it now. 
I believe it. At the start of the window, if you'd have said before we signed anyone, oh, West Ham are going to go in for Wan Bissaka, I under, you know, you'd have thought, no, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. There'd have been, you know, I'd have done this video then. There'd have been loads of comments on there. Don't be stupid. West Ham don't sign anyone. You know, Golden Sullivan are keeping their money to themselves. They can sell up, and I would understand that, and I get that. But now I believe it. And if I believe it, probably Harrison Ashby believes it as well. And that can't be particularly good um, for his morale. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, it might give him the, the impetus and the encouragement he needs to sort of push for a move. Before I talk about Wambasaka, and I've got some uh, opinions on him, I just want to point you in the direction of this video sponsor, which is Spitch. Spitch are a fantasy football app. You download it. The reason I'm pointing down there is that you need to download it from the link below. Download it to your phone. There are many, many ways to play Spitch. You can play it as a pay-to-play fantasy football game. Big prizes, up to £70,000 worth of prizes each and every week. You can play as a free-to-play App whereby you can pit your wits against all the other players across the country who are playing fantasy football, or you can play it in the Hammers Chat Mini League. That's great. Over 170 participants now. Uh, myself and Geo battle it out each, each week. I will share with you my team every single week. If you're going to play it, get your team in now because game week starts today. Game week five starts today. So get your team into that. Actually, even if you played a free game, you're able to win prizes on it. I think the prize pot's up to about £600 on the free game for this particular game week. Get it downloaded, and you know what? Have a spend up on it. If you want Haaland and you want Kane and you want Jesus in your team, no problem. There's an unlimited budget. It's just you, you start from minus points, and it refreshes each and every game week. Now, on to Aaron Wambasaka. Clearly surplus to requirements at Manchester United. And I, if I go back two or three years where Man United signed him for 50 million, OK, Man United pay over the odds for everybody. But when he was coming through at Crystal Palace, and last season he played at Crystal Palace, he was outstanding. And when he signed for Man United and he started to play, I thought he was Manchester United's best defender. And that's what he is. He is a defender. Now, actually, if you look back at his time at Crystal Palace, he would still attack as well. I think that was curtailed um, slightly at Manchester United. But he's had so many managers already at Man United, it's, um, it's hard to judge him on exactly his style of play. But he's a quality player. Put it this way, there was a time when I looked at the right-back situation for England and I saw Trippier... Let's go back two years in. I saw Trippier there. I saw Rhys James there. I uh, saw Trent Alexander-Arnold. Uh, and I saw a Wamba Saka there. And I, I, I know, of course, um, a Carl Walker, but sometimes he plays as a centre-back, as you know. And I, I didn't know I, I, any one of them. I knew Walker was probably the favourite under Gareth Southgate. But out of the bunch underneath, I, I didn't know. I, I thought it was even Stevens. Now, obviously, Rhys James's as career has really taken off since then. Um, Trippier went went abroad for Atletico Madrid, came back, played well for Newcastle, captain them actually. And of course, Trent Alexander Arnold is is um, I mean, he's a wonderful player. I'm not even sure I bloody call him a right back. He plays at right back, but he's like a creative midfielder, isn't he? Really playing at right back. But at that point, I, I, I thought Wan-Bissaka or any one of them. He was spot for choice, Southgate, and any one of them could have been the next in line to take Carl Walker's place. Now, obviously, uh, certainly wan status in the game has dropped down significantly since then. But I tell you what, he is still a hell of a player and he would be a brilliant player for West Ham. At the moment, they're, Man United are playing hardball. And <laughs> say they're playing hardball. It's, it's a joke. I mean, it's like they're playing poker, but they don't really have a poker face. They're terrible at these transfer negotiations. So apparently they're saying, we're not, we're not loaning him, we'll only sell him. And you know what? Man United will do what Man United have to do because I don't think Ten Hag's going to want to keep him around. They're, say, they're saying the same thing with Cristiano Ronaldo as well. I mean, I, I certainly don't expect them to keep older Cristiano Ronaldo and, and wan Bissaka or anybody else that they deem is surplus to requirements. You can certainly understand that Ten Hag wouldn't look at wan Bissaka and think that's that's a guy that, that would play in the Ajax way and, and can really sort of be part of his vision of how he wants Manchester United to play. But as a player from West Ham, significantly better than what we have there. And I, I don't want to conflict that with what I was saying about Ashby. I think Ashby has a hell of a future in the game. But I mean, as a player for the now... Let's answer this simple question. Is wan better than Sue Fowler, better than Ben Johnson at right back? Yes, he is. And any chance West Ham can get to improve their team, I think we're going to take at the moment. Because, look, we're starting... We've dropped the baton a bit 
or we're starting. We're starting from further back. We're handicapped slightly this season because of the start of the season. This is why you should do your business early. And I'm not moaning about the transfer window. It's turned out better than expected. But, uh, you know, I just wonder how many points we'd have on the board if we'd got a lot of this stuff done earlier. Anyway, that's fine. It's, it's done now. Um, but I think, and I don't know about you, when you start putting together your first team, uh, Gio mentioned that he's going to do a video and, and sort of have a look at the different permutations of who can play where and, and different back lines and different attacking strategies and, and formations and personnel that we can put together because we've got a really good squad to choose from. And I think if we had that from the start of the season, we'd probably be... Be looking more hopeful about being that top six, seven team again. And I'm not saying we can't do it, but obviously we're starting with a bit of a handicap now. And what would really assist that would be getting in a player like Aaron Wambasaka. I mean, really, really words. I think he's um, it's just a fantastic player, fantastic defender, still really young. Was he ever a £50 million player? No, probably not, but he probably was a £30 million fullback. And a 30 million fullback is not a bad fullback at all. I think the thing is, West Ham could probably play a lot less for him. I'm pretty sure West Ham can go back to Man United and structure a deal. Say, OK, permanent transfer, we'll give you X amount up front and just structure a deal that gets him off of Manchester United's books and we'll put him on our books, quite frankly. I'd be excited about that. I'd be really, really excited. Rate the player very, very highly. Um... Moyes would like him. I think Moyes would like him as well. He's just such a good defender. Uh, and there's one other story I just want to touch on just quickly, just because it's not worth a video on its own. I mean, it really ain't. A, a few people have mentioned Ross Barkley. Ross Back Barkley has been released by Chelsea. And some people are saying, oh, you know, Moyes likes Ross Barkley. I'm not so sure. That's not how I remember it. Uh, I think Ross Barkley got used far more um, once Moyes left at Everton. If you remember, Ross, um, when Moyes went, to, went from Everton, went to Manchester United, he immediately had £30 million. Pounds. Well, he had more than £30 million because he bought one matter. And, but anyway, he had £30 million pounds and he wanted to go back to Everton and he wanted to get a midfielder. What did he do? Did he choose Ross Barkley? No, he didn't. What did he do? He, he chose Fellaini. I've never felt that, and because of that, I thought, well, that's a strange one because at the time... He was a hell of a young player coming through Ross Barkley. You know, people thought he was going to be the next big thing. He was, you know, the next Wayne Rooney, all that sort of thing. Um, was going to be in the England team for years. It, I think it's fair to say he hasn't fulfilled his potential, Ross Barkley. But he did have huge potential. You only got, only got to look at him at the at the England youth level. You know, in under eighteen, under twenty ones. Look at him there. You know, really amazingly skillful player. But David Moyes didn't go back and get Ross Barkley for Manchester United. Um. He actually went and bought one matter for the same position. He bought somebody else from Everton. So I'm I'm far from convinced. I you know would he have been a good squad player at, at West Ham? Yeah, I mean quite possibly. I don't think he's total rubbish, but uh, I just can't see it happening. I don't think it's going to happen even on a free. I think he'll leave it uh, well alone, uh, really. And I think for Barkley himself, what he probably needs to do now is probably go and find some first team football, sustained. First team football somewhere. Otherwise, you get a big case of, um, I call it Sean Wright Phillips itis, which is too much time at too many big clubs when realistically he should have spent, he should have spent a lot more time at, at lesser clubs and played loads and loads of games. And and I think that's probably what Barkley needs to do. But for West Ham, I number one, I, I think not. Don't particularly want him. But no, more, most importantly, I just don't think this is going to be um, attractive to David Moyes. But I do think there are others coming in. I would not be surprised if if another striker comes in as well. I mean, that, I think, would be... If we could get Wambasaka in one more striker, it would be a real cherry on the cake. And, and I think, again, messaging's really good. I was so delighted to see Moyes start with Skamaka. I, I thought it, it, what it's shown is that he will drop Antonio. That's really important to see. For me, and well, I say for me, but, you know, for everybody, I think to see that is really important. I think now, if, if, if you brought in a third striker, I'd be more happy to it would be a straight shootout. So, you know, it might, might be Ben Brewer to Diaz. I'm not giving up on Breuer. Still think Breuer would be a hell of a player uh, for West Ham, particularly the pace he carries the ball forward. Um, I think we've, we've got some real promise in the team. Real promise. Two more signings. And I do believe that we could go from being an extremely promising team to an incredibly dangerous one. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll be back. Uh, for, for those of you on Patreon, myself and Gio are doing a mug of tea tonight. Say tonight, this afternoon at 4pm. Get, get me act together, really. Uh, we'll be doing that. So we'll be doing a lot of questions. Should be a really good one tonight. So we'll be um, 
you know, taking all the questions and discussing everything that's happened. There's a chance for everybody uh, to have a chat tomorrow. Obviously, match day game against Tottenham. Uh, just in case you didn't know, I'm sure I'm sure everyone's got alerts to their phone and stuff like that. Um, the club have tried to find a slot today to try and get Pekatar a um, to try and get him registered, basically uh, for for Wednesday's game. So I'm not sure if they're going to do that in time, uh, but the club are certainly trying. Would be really good, wouldn't it? I don't think he'd start anyway. Be really good uh, to see him on the bench at least, and I think really really give uh, the team a lift. Even if it didn't, right? By the way, sorry, I know I said I finished the video a second ago. Even if he wasn't available for that, and we could only get him ready for Chelsea. I do think the fact that he would be there, um, he'd be in the stadium, he'd have had a training session with the lads, would really G up those other players like Ben Rama, like Fournells, like Lanzini. I'd probably be thinking, right, you know, I better get, I better get me act together. Um, speaking about Fournells, I will discuss him because we're running out of time. I'll discuss him uh, and Craig Dawson in tomorrow's video. Apparently, <laughs> Barcelona. That's not why I'm laughing. Sorry, disrespectful. I love El Fornicador. Um, apparently, Barcelona are bidding uh, 30, 35 million. Uh, for Pablo Fornells. Imagine that. Anyway, we'll discuss that tomorrow.